Hi, uh, this tutorial is to tell you a little bit about photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is a process that takes place in plant cells. It also takes place in some other types of cells, but for seventh grade biology, we just stick with plant cells. And in the background here, you can kind of see is a plant cell. Here's the cell wall. And right next to it, uh, there's another plant cell, there's another plant cell, and so on. And inside the plant cell, you can see these little round green organelles. They're all over the place. Some are in focus because uh, they're you know in the right spot. Some are further into the cell and some are closer to the surface. So that affects the focus. But what those are is they're chloroplasts. And that is where photosynthesis takes place. Now the other way of thinking of photosynthesis is this. And this is the chemical equation for photosynthesis. And this can be kind of intimidating if you don't know what's really going on here. So let's take a look at something that is familiar right here. That H2O, that refers to a water molecule. Uh, and I think one other thing that people might also be familiar with is right here. That's carbon dioxide. Oops, my B's a little messed up. So that CO2 is talking about a carbon dioxide molecule. H2O is talking about a water molecule. And when you look at this number, that means there are six of those molecules. Okay, six molecules. And over here we have six CO2 molecules. Now this arrow is a little different. In math class, you're used to a equal sign. Forget about the equal sign uh, for this. In chemical equations, you use an arrow, and that shows you the molecules you're starting with and what you're ending with. And photosynthesis uses light energy to pull apart... Oops, sorry about my handwriting there. The light energy can pull apart these molecules into individual atoms, and each one of these letters is an atom. That's a hydrogen atom, that's an oxygen atom, that's an oxygen, and that's a carbon. And in this one molecule, there's one carbon and two oxygen, and there's six of those molecules. Here we, in this water molecule, we have two hydrogen and one oxygen, six of those molecules. Well, those molecules all get pulled apart and rearranged over here, so you get this molecule, which is glucose, that's a form of sugar, And the byproduct is oxygen, or O2. And there's six of those. There's no number right here for the glucose molecule because there's only one. Now we can tell if the chemical equation is balanced if we have the same number of atoms on each side. So in the glucose molecules, you can see that we have six of those carbon atoms right there. And if we go back over here, well, there's one carbon atom in that molecule, but there's six molecules, so six carbon atoms. If we move on to oxygen, well, we have six of these molecules, and there's two in each, so we multiply those. That's 12 oxygen. And over here, we have six oxygen, so that adds up to 18. Well, here we have 12 oxygen, and we have, once again, 6 oxygen. So that adds up to 18. We have the same number on both sides. And that's the chemical equation for photosynthesis. Another way to think about it is you've got a couple things going on here. We've got the carbon dioxide going into the leaf. We've got the water going in through the roots. The sunlight shines down on it. And remember, the sunlight is what allows that to happen. It can pull the atoms apart. And then this sugar gets stored in the plant, and the oxygen is right over here. It's leaving. It leaves through little openings in the leaves and goes back out into the atmosphere. Another way of thinking about it is like this. We've got carbon dioxide floating through the air. It goes into the leaves. Water goes up through the roots into the tree, and then sun shines on the tree. 
and then oxygen is released in the atmosphere and sugar is stored in the tree or glucose and then along comes a zebra or any mammal or any organism for that matter and it can eat the tree and get the sugar and if that animal stays there long enough eventually a lion will come along and eat it and then the lion ends up getting some of the sugar and other stuff that was stored into that zebra and it can also breathe in the oxygen I guess the zebra could have breathed in the oxygen too if it had been faster and there you have photosynthesis.